Hey guys, Trevin here. I'm currently sitting in a 13 Ferrari FF. Um, so we bought this car a couple of years ago. We bought it out of Seattle, um, Ferrari Seattle. And um, we wanted to launch this campaign. And the idea was to do everything Ferrari doesn't want you to do. And, and I, I don't know if you know this or not, but Ferrari does not want like or want you to modify their car. So if you modify a Ferrari, you have the potential to be banned from ever buying another Ferrari again. And people like Justin Bieber and Dead Mouse and um, these guys, you know, they do these full wraps and crazy things and then they get on the blacklist, the bad, the bad boy list with Ferrari and um, they don't get to buy one again or a new one. So we picked up this Ferrari and we thought, man, let's, let's launch a campaign and uh, let's, Let's do everything Ferrari asks us not or says not to do. Let's drive this thing in Gold Rush Rally. Let's get a bunch of attention from it. And then uh, when they send us a cease and desist, let's launch a t-shirt campaign that says not Ferrari and the not in the Ferrari font in red and then the Ferrari in our Sway font and our color. And so we picked this thing up in Seattle, uh, actually picked it up in, in February and it was snowing. And um, first thing I asked him was, uh, if I send you or order some snow tires, can you have them installed? And they kind of went, what? Um, you're going to drive it in the snow? Yeah, of course. So they install snow tires on it, and um, I go pick it up and drive it home. Well, this thing's amazing, right? So it is a, a V12. It's 700 horsepower. It uh, it has a bunch of different modes, one of which is snow, snow mode. So it just locks you into fourth gear. So it's four-wheel drive up to fourth gear. And then after that, it just buys it all to the rear, or actually it just disengages the front. Um, and um, so we just drove it in snow mode. And I mean, there were some spots we were touching 130, 135 miles an hour. Did great. Um, brought it home and uh, and immediately got to work. So um, first thing we did is do the iconic Ferrari yellow stripe on the hood sideways. The calipers are yellow, so it matched perfect. Um, when you order a, a piece of Sway merch, um, the packing paper inside, there's an Ouroboros uh, kind of in flowers. It's eating its own tail. And so we used that same pattern and wrapped the car on an all-over print. Um, and then uh, we did uh, rock sliders. I built some custom rock sliders. And again, nothing crazy permanent, just use, using body mounts and stuff. So did some rock sliders. And then it said we did some sway inserts that light up. And then did a, a front bumper, some louvers, and uh, and some rims. Um, then we took the Ferrari logo and took their shield and put our logo in their shield, 3D printed them, put it all over the car, thinking we'd get a bunch of attention for this thing. Um, did a rigid off-road light in the front. And then uh, and then did Gold Rush Rally, and we drove it from Montana to Vegas, Vegas to Miami and back. And it was awesome. Gold Rush was a blast. This car did great. We put a roof rack on top, so we had the rigid lights and the roof rack. And then uh, we collaborated with Boston Dynamics and um, reskinned their robot dog and added like an STO wing and some intakes and, and ducting and made it look really sporty. And then modified the trunk so the dog would fit in the back. And then the dog rode in the back with us. And then when we stopped, the dog had come out. And it, and it was amazing. We had a great time. Um, the trip was amazing. Uh, so like I said, we did Montana to Vegas. So we took off um, from Montana, drove straight down to Vegas in this thing. And, and we, we clipped along pretty good. Our very first incident was uh, we're cruising along and there's a truck carrying potatoes. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I went to pass him. And we're just getting pelted on the windshield, just pelted, pelted. And like, you know, nothing's cracking or anything. What the heck is that? It smells like French fries. And realized we just passed a potato truck. And so the whole car is covered in potatoes. So uh, we pulled over in Salt Lake and um, we uh, washed the car. And then we took it on down to Vegas. Well, we were in Vegas a couple days early. So we met up with um, some friends of ours and we did uh, two, two shoots. So we did one. Uh, we went to this amazing studio. I'll tag them in the description. And um, we got to use a bunch of lights and we did lasers and all kinds of stuff. And uh, we just kind of shot the shot the car for what it was and then came up with this harebrained idea to do an 80s themed kind of um, Kung Fury style um, music video, if you will, um, to um, 
or Survivor or something, something goofy. Anyway, I'll, I'll play it at the end. But So we did this uh, music video, and then the next day we went out to a dry lake bed. And this dry lake bed was amazing. I mean, it's just outside of Vegas, out towards Henderson. And it is just totally fat, flat, totally dry lake bed. And uh, so we're out there shooting, and we're shooting the dog, walking in the desert, and we're doing some fun stuff. And we see a guy at the end, and he's using a flamethrower. And uh, we're thinking, that would be really cool. So drive over there, introduce myself. Hey, you know, we're shooting. Is there any way that we could collaborate on a little video? And they said, absolutely. We're just testing. So they actually with a company that bought out all of the uh, Mad Max vehicles. And so they were doing this giant music video for this guy the next day, but they wanted to test the flamethrower. And so they were totally down. We got there, we pulled up. Uh, my wife Emma got out and she's shooting the flamethrower and the dog's walking. And then he goes, hey, we have some really cool high-speed cameras. Do you want to do a drive-by? Sure. So we do a drive-by and he's like, no, no, you don't understand. These are really high speed, like drive-by fast. Like, you know, give it some onion. So about 125, 130 on this dry lake bed and just right past them. And then he's like, can you drift the car? And I said, yeah, I drift the car. And he goes, see if you can drift around. We want to catch, you know, the flamethrower and your wife and all this stuff. And of course we're shooting too. So turn into this epic, epic uh, video and photo shoot that we got with the dog and in the car. And then um, the next day we started the, we started Gold Rush Rally. We left from there. And like I said, it was a seven or eight day journey across the US all the way to Miami and um, and this thing did amazing so we tried to stay ahead to kind of the front of the pack and and um, stay ahead um, one of the things is so we used uh, sea sucker suction cups for the roof rack and the problem with that like that's all great but everyone's telling me these are good for like a hundred miles an hour maybe and we're we're hauling like I'm doing I'm touching 120 130 at points and um, and I can feel it about 1:30. I can feel the roof start to shake. So I'm thinking, eh, maybe not the best idea. So every gas station stop, every time we slow down, we're out reaching, pumping these things up, making sure they're uh, staying suctioned, and they and they did fine. Um, but I tried to limit it to about 120, 125. And sure enough, we're coming through Georgia. So the one portion of this that I tried to get on the car a little bit to catch up, and um, trying to clip along at about 1:30. And uh, I see on ways there's some cops ahead. And so I start to slow down just, just a hair. I think we have plenty of time. There's a little bend. And then I'm, I'm letting off the gas and my radar goes crazy. They hit me with a laser. And uh, they tagged us at 116 and a 65 maybe. Ugh. So of course we're sitting there. First thing I do is I tell my wife, okay, I'm probably going to jail. Um, you need to learn to drive this car really quick. So... Here's the key for the ignition. Here's the start button on the steering wheel. Drive it like a regular car. There's no park. Just pull the key out when you're done. And she's in tears, like, I don't want to drive the car. And uh, I'm, I know, but I might be going to jail. And of course, it's Georgia. They have zero tolerance. So we get pulled over. And these guys are the nicest people on the planet. They come up there, and it's two of them, one on each side. And they come up and what's your hurry sir and real slow southern draw and they're looking at each other and kind of looking around and you know that they have all the time in the world and i said oh man just must have got away from me i don't want to give away that we're on a rally or anything must have got away from me i'm sorry you know I'm, uh, obviously i'll i'll take the i'll take the ticket you know and i'm not going to argue it and so they were polite and they went back to the car well look a minute or two later like, the guy comes to the passenger side and he goes, son, we got a problem. And I go, with what? And he said, this car is registered as a Ford Escape. And I said, oh, no. Okay. Well, the one thing I didn't have, the registration. And I left it at home. It was on my desk. So I'm calling home, trying to get someone to take a photo of it, to send. I'm panicking. Like, not, now I, they got me for speeding. They think I stole the car. It's a whole big thing. Now... Emma's really in tears, and we're I'm about to be in tears, and sure enough, um, I get sent the copy of the title and the registration, and right about the time I get them, they come back around, and they said, oh, haha, by the way, sorry, we fat-fingered a key, you're totally fine. I'm like, okay, well, 
it was a super speeder ticket, which in Georgia, I guess, is kind of a big deal. They let me go, um, but I ended up still getting the ticket. So that was about a $3,000 event right there to try to get that one off my record and fight it a little bit. But and thankfully, it's the only ticket I've ever got. But that was that was quite the, quite the situation. So we take off, <clears throat> flying on through, and um, we make it to Miami. And when I get to Miami, we're both feeling a little congested. We're not feeling good. Um, this is in 20, let's see, 23, 22, 2020. Let's see, this is Gold Rush 22. So yeah, this would have been 22. And uh, we're both feeling a little gross and, um, you know, COVID still thing. And uh, we get to the fount Fountain Blue in Miami, and we end up going out to this party, and now I'm really starting to not feel good. Emma's not feeling good. Um, we're like, oh, man, this isn't good. What do we do? So we get a COVID test. Sure enough, we test positive for COVID. And I'm thinking, oh, my, great, you know? Um, what are we going to do? And so we're, we're exhausted. We're sick as can be. So I go tell the front desk, hey, we have COVID. We have to stay at least another day or two to just get enough energy to get in the car. As soon as I said those words, they might as well have put us in prison. They full lockdown. They were freaking out. They said that uh, they made our keys so they would work to get us in the door, but then they wouldn't work again. We had to order food, and they didn't want us out of our rooms, and, and it was a whole big thing. So we ended up staying three days, um, just completely dead to the world, didn't move. We at one point had to um, Instacart some uh, food and some groceries, but they wouldn't let the person up. So I get, tipped them extra so they could get in the elevator with someone that was going up to our room, drop them off. Finally, at the end of three days, I was feeling good enough. I said, you know what? Screw it. We won't get out of the car. I'm just driving us straight home. So we get in the car. I'm heading home. This is it. We're done. I, I no longer have a fever. I feel fine. Uh, Emma's still a little under the weather. And so we take off from Miami and make it to Atlanta. We get to Atlanta, check into the hotel, and um, cars do for an oil change. By now, we're feeling fine. It's, the, it's another day, so we're day four. Feel totally fine. And uh, so I'm going to take this in a Ferrari. I'm going to get an oil change. So I leave in the morning. I'm headed to Ferrari. And uh, I'm on my way, yeah. and there's a construction zone, and there's uh, it what looked like, and there's traffic like crazy, what looked like one of those reflector cone deals they put in the ground, except like it had a base to it. And I, I'm assuming that's what it was, or a pipe, or a giant fitting, I don't know what it was. It was in the road, it's bumper to bumper, traffic starts flowing, I take off, and wham all of a sudden i've got a vibration oh no things aren't feeling good i'm i'm sick to my stomach i i've did, done something with the car i make it to ferrari seattle or ferrari atlanta um and and now so I, I i talk to those guys about the car and and everything and they they pretty much tell us you know what um you're not getting a cease and desist we're you, you didn't do anything crazy you didn't violate any of our policies um, you know, this, you, you should have done it to something besides an FF if you were looking to, uh, get a cease and desist out of this whole deal. So, so there's that. But then, uh, so now I'm like, oh, great. Well, now I don't want to get the oil changed. I want to get the wheels fixed. So I, uh, call a buddy of mine over at Butler Tire and Wheel. Um, shout out to those guys. Make it over there. They call in the maestro, he calls him. And, uh, he shows up. Uh, sure enough, I have a bent wheel. And uh, so that same day, they take the wheel, they get the car in, they get a new barrel for it from HRE, repair it, get me back on the road first thing the next morning. So get back on the road, we take off, we make it, um, and then just we just go straight through. We just drive straight through all the way back to, to Montana. But I'll tell you what, um, I had, by the time it was all said and done, I had 86 hours of seat time. Um, it was absolutely ridiculous, a ridiculous trip. Um, but as far as the car, this thing did amazing. And, you know, one of the things that, um, you know, Ed Bolian of Vinwicky and I had talked about is uh, he had a uh, Audi R8. And uh, one of the things we talked about is what's going to be a more comfortable car? Is it the Audi 
or is it the uh, FF? And I'll tag that video um, in the description as well. But, you know, his car did great, and this car does great. The difference is storage room, right? This thing, we've got back seats, we have a, a trunk area, um, but what happens when you have more space is you use it. And that's exactly what we did, is we brought more junk. And so we had stuff piled to the ceiling, piled to the back, um, where I think if we had limited space, we probably would have been, uh, we, we wouldn't have brought as much and um, we would have just bare bones it and probably would have been for the better because we're in now we've got a bunch of stuff in here we're lugging it around it's a ton of weight it was hard you know especially in the mountain roads when we're cornering this thing hard just all that extra weight and everything um, but all in all it was an amazing trip this car is being sold I have someone coming to pick it up so I'm gonna miss it but um, yeah check out my other ch I've got a bunch of shorts um, of this car specifically all its little quirks all the controls everything like that a couple launch videos and then i'll tag the i'll tag the goofy 80s um video you can you can check that one out and then i'll tag the one that uh, ed did and i'll tag gold rush so go check all their videos out um like subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and then uh share this with your friends if you would i'm supposed to say that for the algorithm by the way so i'm gonna start saying that from now on um and yeah, so that's the uh, that's our gold rush story in the Ferrari FF.